How are you doing? Uh, can you see my screen? Can you hear me well? Uh, yeah, yep, yep, loud and clear. Okay, so my name is Oscar and uh, I'm gonna present you to Bernard Inference in new radio with ONNX. Uh, I was part of the of the team that developed it with uh, Kevin and Alberto. And uh, the objective was to integrate uh, deep learning inference in uh, in new radio, because uh, as you've seen, I think there is a quite big interest in, in this field, in cognitive radio and uh, in military, and uh, it has a lot of applications. So having a proper way to, having a proper tool to, to facilitate these two things, uh, it's uh, quite interesting. Uh, the first part of the project was uh, to analyze the different tools that we could use in order to to carry out this this task, and uh, we uh, we ended up uh, deciding uh, to use ONNX and the ONNX runtime. And uh, basically, what we uh, what we developed was uh, an out of the three module for on, a new radio that uh, uses the ONNX runtime, and this for inference and this runtime supports the ONNX format. And uh, this is because uh, the ONNX format is a, a interoperable uh, framework for uh, deep learning and machine learning. Uh, and this, this means that uh, you can go with uh, one of the multiple uh, deep learning frameworks that uh, they are available. Like for example, in the previous presentation, TensorFlow or even with uh, Keras. But uh, you can develop it in. A, you can train your. You can design and train your model and MATLAB, and then uh, transform it to to ONNX, and you you will be able to to load it and and execute it, or PyTorch, which is another huge one, or maybe one of the other older frameworks. It's just a a, a format that uh, facilitates the the exchange of the of the deep learning models. But uh, this is not a uh, free which means that uh, you need an extra step to convert your, your model into this format. And uh, there is also another problem that uh, because it's a an standardized format between multiple frameworks, not all the operations available in all the frameworks are available in ONNX. So maybe, or even you can implement your own uh, operation in some framework, and of course it won't be available in ONNX because it's a custom operation. So somehow you are limited to the operations supported by uh, by ONNX. And we we chose to use ONNX runtime because um, it has uh, native support of ONNX and uh, it also supports different uh, hardware accelerations. Uh, you have uh, CPU accelerations with uh, Intel libraries. Uh, you have uh, GPU accelerations with CUDA or MN or, or MND. You have uh, hardware acceleration for other platforms and for uh, other uh, Hardware that is, uh, for example, uh, specific for uh, for FPGAs, and uh, that way we can run accelerated inference. Um, as I said, it has support to to NNX, which is perfect. Uh, it has uh, interf API interfaces in Python and C++ and others, but uh, Python and C++ are the new radio interfaces that we need. Now, as I said, it supports uh, different. Uh, Hardware and software accelerations, and it also another part that is relevant is that, is that it's an, it has an extensible architecture. That means that, uh, for example, if one operation in on an X is only supported on CPU, you are free to support it on other hardware. It's just that you will have uh, your own version of the on an X runtime, but it's quite, let's say, easy to just uh, include something like that in in your runtime. And uh, this is what uh, we end up implemented implementing. Uh, it's a, a very simple block. And we use the Python uh, interface. So we use the ONNX random Python interface. Uh, we only support a single uh, input for the for the model. Um, it has to be a float. And uh, we also support one single output for, for the model. And we made it uh, so you can choose the, the hardware that uh, it, uh, it's going to be run on. And uh, this is the configuration of the of the block. Uh, you just need to, to load the, the model. Uh, you need to specify the batch size. Uh, this will make you uh, run multiple samples at once. So you can uh, take advantage of uh, GPU acceleration, for example. 
uh, you need to define the the input size of the of your model and you need to define the output size of the model and uh, as i said you need to the to to say which device is going to be used to run the, the inference and uh, here you have an example of uh, how can you use the the block in order to run inference inside a new radio in this case we are using a pluto sdr source and in this case we are using a very similar model as the one described before for uh, uh, modulation classification. So in this case, uh, we are using an input of uh, 128 samples, which means that we are gonna be feeding the uh, the, the model uh, 256 uh, float points, uh, 128 for uh, Qs and 128 for for Is. Um, here, uh, because the this kind of blocks, they only support one dimensional data. You have to take into account how, how you have defined your model. So for example, in the previous uh, uh, presentation, they used uh, a two by 100, 1024, which means that the IQ are seen as, a, as different channels. But in this case, we are using a 128 by two, which means that uh, the channels are in the last dimension and in this case, you have to take into account that in order to configure the the input of your of your string in this uh, of your data. In this case, because our channel is in the last position, we have you have to uh, feed it uh, a, a vector with IQ interleaved. But this it's up to you. It depends on how you uh, define your model. It's just that you have to take into account that uh, it has to be a one-dimensional uh, interleaved uh, data in row major order. Then you will have, a, uh, for each input, you will have one output. Uh, in the case of the, in the previous presentation, if you had a binary classification, you will have just one output saying that is zero or one. Or if you are trying to classify different modulations, you will have one output per, per class. So if you are trying to classify six different labels, you will have six different, six floats, one per, Per label, and in this case, our model had different ten different labels. So our uh, output is uh, ten different float points, uh, each one with the probability of belonging to that to that class. And in this case, we are choosing a a way to represent the data, um, more or less a visual way to represent the data because you have to do something with the output of, of the model. Uh, this is the actual the actual output of the model. In the top, you will have the actual uh, the output of the SDR, this block here, the waterfall, and here you have the output of the of the classification. We have to adjust the the raster sync with the same number of columns as the same number of uh, outputs, so the offset is always the same class. So each column here means uh, the output for each uh, for each label or for each class that you're trying to classify. And as you can see here, we also send the output to a UDP, so you can use it in external tools for uh, to receive the data. But it's just a matter of uh, how can you or how do you like to to use the the output of of the block. It, if you want to show it or if you want to use it inside new radio, it's up to you. It's outside of of the of the scope of the block. Uh, so this is what we did. Uh, for the future, uh, we think that it's important to increase the flexibility of the block because we are only support one input and one output, and you can define as many inputs and outputs as you want in, in deep learning. It's just that you should, you should choose which ones do you want to output. Uh, yeah, uh, something very important in deep, in deep learning is the normalization of the input, and this is also up to your uh, architecture. And uh, this is you have to do it inside of the of the model or at, outside in a previous step. And uh, if you do it inside of the model, okay, it, it's going to be inside of the on the next model. But if you do it outside of the model, you should you will have to do it on new radio if you want to use the same normalization method that you you've used in in training. So this can get quite complex, and maybe we can provide some common ways of normalization. Uh, we could include more examples because nowadays we have a very simplistic examples and uh, because on NX and on NX on time uh, they have become uh, quite popular let's say and they are the, they are putting uh, 
resources uh, behind them and they are keeping a very fast pace of development. So I don't know which version are now, but I think they update it every two months or three months. Uh, so yeah, so we have implemented a new radio out of the tree module for uh, deep learning inference. Uh, it's uh, it, it has a in framework interoperability, so you can train your model in, in MATLAB and then just export it to one NX, and it should work out of the box. It has hardware acceleration uh, thanks to the runtime environment. We have presented this work uh, with very good results in the Software Defined Radio Academy in 2020 and the new radio conference in 2020. And we also are getting uh, questions every now and then about uh, this work. And, uh, and yeah, that uh, that's all. Uh, if if we, we can comment on the hardware acceleration, for example, uh, we tested on a, we tested this uh, this uh, flow graph uh, with the Pluto SDR source, which is it has a USB 2 connection, and in CPU with one single bat, uh, we were getting around 3.3, uh, 3.4 megabytes megabytes per per uh, per second, and the same in in the GPU. And once you start increasing the bat size, of uh, you get a uh, more performance, even even you get uh, to saturate the USB link, or even if you are trying to do inference with a file inside new radio, you also, you also saturate the, the SATA, but uh, the SATA connection of the hard disk, but the, this depends on, on your hardware. So the more powerful hardware you have, the more performance you will be. And uh, I think that's all. Thank you, Oscar, for the presentation. Um, any questions uh, from anyone on chat or over the microphone? Uh, I, I would like to add that uh, you can find uh, the source code documentation with examples and Docker files in the in the GitLab. So with a simple Docker pull, you will have the whole thing running. Even if you have a Docker with a NVIDIA support, you will have a GPU support as well. So it should be, if you want to test it, it's, it's really, really easy. Excellent. Then thanks once again, um, Oscar, for the presentation.